الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده اللهم يا مسبب الأسباب ويا مفتح الأبواب ويا ذل الحارين توكلت عليك يا رب العالمين ووفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد أدي برضو السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته First of all, allow me to thank uh, on your behalf, on my behalf, the Islamic Education Foundation of Jeddah City, this branch of uh, Masjid Al-Lami here, for allowing me one more time since Ramadan, alhamdulillah, to address you. So thank you very much, Jazakumullah Khair, for the opportunity, and for all of you who are attending on this Friday, this blessed day, uh, on your weekend to learn more about Islam as many of you, actually most of you, are newcomers into the faith, new Muslims, to increase your faith and knowledge in Islam. So I pray with you that may Allah the Almighty increase our faith and knowledge in His deen, in His faith, in His religion, in His way of life. And bless you and bless your families and your children and guide us more and more. With regards to guidance and evidence and how to tell family members, I'm, I'm sure that many of you, most of you, come from a Christian background, right? And you're still perhaps struggling or in a bit of trouble or challenge with some wives, spouses, you know, sons and daughters, cousins, perhaps even more parents who are still resistant to the fact that you chose willingly, nobody forced you to embrace Islam. They are having difficulties with that, especially nowadays with the media. Muslim? What do you think of Bin Laden? What do you think of Abu Sayyaf? Terrorists, you know, everywhere. So it's becoming harder and harder for, a, for even Muslims born into Muslim families to live their Islam in the West or non-Muslim countries, let alone somebody like you, raised in a Catholic family or a non-Muslim family, and then you on your own, you know, no Muslim terrorist putting on a, a sword in your throat, or telling you that he will bomb your house unless you become Muslim, no, no. You freely, willingly embrace Islam. Alhamdulillah, Allah. But your, the struggle is still going on on a social level, even at workplace with non-Muslims. Now, I want to help you, help me, help them, give them something for them to think about, for them to consider. First of all, one of the ways for you to talk to all people, to tell people, you know, to tell them is that, you know, once I was a Catholic and non-Muslim, and today I'm a Muslim, alhamdulillah. Naturally, people are going to ask you why, right? I'm sure you hear that question all the time. Did, did your kafir, your boss, promise to increase your salary? And that's why you became Muslim? Did they promise you they're going to make you stay 10 years in Saudi Arabia? Any benefits anymore? I don't know. So people are thinking, people are thinking like that. You tell them, you see, Every prophet, every messenger of God was given a miracle from God. One way, one prophet or a messenger from God, yes, many of them had or performed miracles, the ones we know about in the Holy Quran, to prove to their people that it was God, it was Allah who sent them, that they were sent by Allah. So the purpose of those miracles they performed is for their people to know that Allah sent them. What is a miracle? It is something <coughs> wonderful, but that defies laws of physics and laws of nature. It is God's law in nature. It defies that. And once it defies that, it's a miracle. And only God can perform that in the hand of a prophet. <coughs> but all of those miracles at, of Moses, peace be upon him, Moza, Musa, or Jesus Christ, only their people witnessed and saw at the time. You only heard of them, but you weren't there, were you? No. Now, what about the miracle of Muhammad وسلم, that defied laws of nature, God's laws in nature, or in you know physical laws, laws of physics? 
He performed some of those, but we weren't there to see Muhammad, peace be upon him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, performing them. The only difference between Muhammad's miracle, of all miracles, the greatest miracle and the prophets before him is that this book is his everlasting miracle of miracles. The mother of all miracles, Shaykh Ahmad Didat, my mentor, my teacher, Rahmatullah alayhi, may Allah have mercy on him, calls the Quran. Muhammad's mother of all miracles. Miracle of miracles, this book. So if you want to know, my non-Muslim friend, my cousin, you know, my family member, if you want to know why I embrace Islam, you ought to read this book, Muhammad's Miracle, and it will testify to you that Allah sent him. So the guy says, okay, but show me an example. You have read the Quran. Open the Holy Quran of yours and show me. And this is what the, today's talk is based on. One verse from the Quran that we are going to uh, shed light on, and then I want you, please, when you go home, you owe it to yourself that you obtain a translation of the meaning of the Holy Quran like this one, you know, preferably with commentary and index at the back, so that every time you hear the Ustad, the teacher, the Shaykh, and I'm no Shaykh, if I haven't been introduced in Tagalog to you as one, please forgive my brother. I am no Shaykh. Right? I'm only a, a, a researcher and a student that's still studying and learning from the brother and all of you, learning from you. So anytime you hear anybody telling you a verse from the Quran, make it your habit to go back at home and look it up and sit and study. The verse we're going to deal with is from chapter number six. Every chapter has a number in the Quran. So this is chapter number six, write it down so you don't forget. The name of the chapter is Surah Al-An'am, the cattle. That is the meaning of the word. Chapter number six, Surah, chapter Al-An'am, the cattle, verse number 91. What is your Ikama number? What is your ID number? Right, right, mashallah. Now this is even shorter, only three digits. Chapter number six, verse 91. So even if you can't memorize the verse in Arabic, or if you cannot memorize the translation of the meaning of the verse in English, at least you know where to find it. Chapter number 6, verse 91, where Allah says, Listen very carefully. Allah says about the pagans of Mecca, the mushriks, those who worship false gods, Allah is telling Muhammad and his followers and the rest of the Muslims about what they said. Those people, those pagans, they have no just estimate of God, meaning they have no regard for God, no respect for God. When they said, what did they say? Allah, God, did not send any book, any revelation on any man. That's what they said against the claim or the invitation of Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was inviting them. I'm a messenger from God. I received the revelation from God, the Quran. So in response to that, his people, the pagans who worshiped false gods, many gods, 366 of them, they told him, God did not send any revelation on any man, man. So in response to that, Allah first records the allegation, what they said, and then he teaches Muhammad, peace be upon him, his messenger, and the followers and the rest of the Muslims, what to say in response. Now Allah says to Muhammad, Qul, say, tell them, Man anzal al-kitab alladhi ja'a bihi Musa, who sent down the book that Moses, Musa, Prophet Moses, brought? Question mark. Now, this is very strange. The pagans of Mecca did not believe in any prophet, in any message from heaven. Did not believe in Moses. Did not believe in Jesus. In fact, the Quran records that every time the pagans, the rest of the Arabians, heard the word Jesus, they used to mock the Christians, not <laughs> Jesus. 
it was Muhammad وسلم, that made us love and respect Jesus. And yet the Christians don't give Muhammad credit for that. I come from Mecca. I was born in Mecca. The Meccans used to ridicule and mock Jesus. But it was Muhammad that made them وسلم, love and respect and honor him. So the Meccans didn't believe in any messenger, any message from heaven. But in response to them, Allah tells Muhammad to tell them who brought down the book which Moses brought, meaning the Torah, in Arabic, the Torah. Why would Allah want Muhammad وسلم, and his followers to tell the pagans, look at the book Moses brought? They don't believe in it find it very strange, right? I mean, I will have to tell you something you believe in. But in response to that, I tell you, look, you know, remember, ask the Jews. They believe in Moses. He had the Torah. <coughs> but the pagans don't. Why did Allah respond to the pagans this way? Here comes the miracle. You might find it very strange, but wait. The rest is yet to come. About the Torah, Allah says in the verse, About that uh, Torah, Allah says, that Torah is light and guidance for man. And now about the Torah, Allah further says, All of a sudden, Allah from addressing the pagans of Mecca, the speech now is addressing the Jews and the followers of Moses, who were not there at the time. You know, there are verses in the Quran that were revealed in Mecca, before the Prophet, peace be upon him, migrated and went to Medina. Those verses and, and chapters are called Meccan verses and Meccan chapters. So are Makkiyah. Ayat Makkiyah. This verse and the entire chapter here is a Meccan one. The entire context of this part of this is in Mecca. There were no Jews at the time there confronting Muhammad peace be upon him or debating him. But now the verse addresses the Jews as well. Telling the pagans of Mecca something that the Jews did to the Torah, the book of Moses that God sent down. You don't believe Muhammad? You don't believe that he, I gave him the Quran? Look at the book that Moses brought, what the Jews did with it. Allah said here, تَجْعَلُونَهُ قَرَاطِيسِ تُبْدُونَهَا وَتُخْفُونَ كَثِيرًا What does the word قَرَاطِيس mean in Arabic? The verse says, you had copied that Torah into sheets and then you folded those sheets into scrolls for show and you have hidden so much of it. Allah says here, listen very carefully, Allah is telling the pagans, to, telling Muhammad and the Muslim to tell the pagans, and at the same time, the speech is direct, directed at the Jews. The book of Moses, which he brought, which I sent down, Allah is saying, a light and a guidance for mankind, this is what you did to it. You copied it from the original into sheets, and then you folded the sheets like that, and you made it into scrolls for show, and you hid much of it. You concealed many of it. Now, the word for that in Arabic is portas. Portas is the singular for this. This is a scroll. I just made a scroll, right? Karatis is many scrolls, the plural. The plural for kartas. Look how accurate the Quran is. And now, go and ask the Christians and the priests, the, the Christian church fathers, and the rabbis, rabbi, sir, church father, reverend, minister, did the Jews at the time of Moses and after, did they copy the Torah into sheets and then they folded them into scrolls and they hid them somewhere, many of them? 
believe me, before the year 1947, any Jew or any Christian would have told you, no, 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 that didn't happen before 1947. In fact, there was a Christian Orientalist who was also a priest. He was studying Islam, and he wrote a few books against Islam by the name Henry Lamans, he's French. He wrote several books against Islam. Henry Lamans lived in the 8th, 19th century, and then he said, the Quran says in chapter 6, verse 91, that the Jews and the Christians copied the Torah and the scripture into sheets of paper, they turned it into scrolls, and they hid it. I dare Muslims to tell us where. If Muslims cannot tell us where, the Quran is not true. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> That's what he said. He posed a challenge to Muslims. But what happened in 1974? So Henry Lamans, as a priest, he didn't know. The Pope in the Vatican didn't know. Not a single Jew, rabbi, or no, you know, no, normal Jew, not a single priest anyway knew what the Quran was saying. So they said, the Quran is lying. But in the year 1973, allow me to read this from Encyclopedia Wikipedia. I'm giving you information that is easy for you to find out. Wikipedia is a uh, public encyclopedia online on the internet. If you, if you can't have access to the internet, you know, you ask your child to help you. Son, show daughter, go to Wikipedia and type Dead Sea Scrolls. Dead Sea Scrolls. You know the Dead Sea? You know, in Jordan, Palestine, and occupied Palestine? Right. So type Dead Sea Scrolls and read. This is very short. I'm reading from Wikipedia. The Dead Sea Scrolls are a collection of 972 texts discovered between 1946 and 1956, 10 years, that consist of biblical manuscripts from what is now known as the Hebrew Bible and extra biblical documents found on the northwest shore of the Dead Sea from which they derive their name. That is why they were called Dead Sea Scrolls. They were spe specifically located at Kherbat Qumran. They also called them Qumran Scrolls. They go by both names. In what was then British Mandate Palestine, and since 1947, what has been known as the West Bank in occupied Palestine, Abdul Fadhabi. The initial discovery by Bedouin Shepherd Muhammad Adib, who discovered it? a Muslim Palestinian shepherd. You know a shepherd who looks after sheep? Not even a priest, not even a Jewish rabbi could say to you that he saw Jesus in a dream or the Holy Ghost possessed him. Have you met the born again Christians? You know, I love them, I love them. They used to tell me in Boston, Massachusetts, America, everywhere, I am filled with the Holy Spirit. There's Holy Spirit everywhere in me, inside me, right? guiding me. I sin no more. I am saved by the blood of Jesus. Did the Holy Spirit tell you about the hidden scrolls? For 2,000 years, did any revelation from Jesus, the Holy Spirit, from God, come to any church father about the Dead Sea Scrolls? No, they did not. They were totally in the dark. Christendom and Judaism, all Jews, all Christians were in the dark. They did not know about the Dead Sea Scrolls. They did not know that they were copies of the Torah, of the scripture. It turned into scrolls and hidden, exactly as the Quran says. They did not know. But the Quran was revealed, this verse was revealed how many years? 1,400 years ago. 1,400 or 600 years after Jesus Christ Muhammad, peace be upon him, was told in the Quran, this revelation came to him about what the Jews and Christians did to their books, and they didn't know. So only in 1946, 1947, 
a Muslim shepherd. You know, not even an educated Muslim brother. Shepherd Paul, by the name Muhammad. Look at the coincidence. The Quran was revealed to Muhammad, وسلم, a Muslim shepherd by the name Muhammad discovers the, the caves. They, these scrolls were hidden in 11 caves. He discovered uh, some of, in one of them. SubhanAllah. Why? So that the Jews and Christians don't take credit. Oh, we discovered them. No, no. Allah is, is showing them that even a Muslim shepherd discovered it for you. So you don't say, the Holy Spirit came to you and helped you. No. Don't, they got no help from heaven to discover it. By chance. But it was Allah's plan. You know, before, at least 50 years before this, the Jews and the Christians were telling the Muslims, where are the hidden scrolls the Quran is talking about? They came out. So in 10 years, they discovered many of them. And then, uh, now the good news is that all of these manuscripts are available online. They are available online. Just type Dead Sea Scrolls online and you will find them by the Museum of the so-called State of Israel. They put it all online for us to examine. Now they say, the oldest Hebrew manuscripts of the Bible were Masoretic texts. The Jews and the Christians used to say, we have so many manuscripts of the Bible, thousands and thousands of them of the Gospel. You Muslims have only very few. Allah is saying in the Quran, about the Torah, تَجْعَلُونَهُ قَرَاطِيسَ تُبْدُونَهَا You made it into scrolls for show. They are still doing it for show. But Allah also said, you concealed much of it. So now, according to the scholars of the Bible, and Wikipedia is quoting them, they are saying, the oldest, the manuscripts have been dated to various ranges between the year 400 BCE, that is before Christian era, 400 years before Jesus, and the year 318. Christian era. So in 700 years, they were copying for seven centuries the Torah and the scripture and showing some and hiding and concealing many of it. And then they're saying the oldest Hebrew manuscripts of the Bible were Masoretic texts dating to 10th century, such as the Alipu uh, Codex. The biblical manuscripts found among the Dead Sea Scrolls push back the date a millennium to the second city. Before the year 1947, the, if you were to ask the Jews and the Christians, how old is the oldest Bible you have? So he'll tell you, Alibu Codex, that is Halab in Syria, modern day Syria. But when they discovered the scrolls, they found they had older ones, at least 1,000 years older. They didn't know about it. And I would like to ask now the Jews and the Christians, how did Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you can ask your family members after you show them the verse, and then you take them to a computer, or buy a book on Dead Sea Scrolls, or an article, print it out, and show them. How did Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam know about the Dead Sea Scrolls, about the hidden scrolls? Dead Sea Scrolls are in the Quran. Qumran scrolls are in the Quran. Chapter, nine, chapter 6, verse 91. How did Muhammad know? How did he know? Who told him? Allah. Isn't this an evidence for you, my friend, to consider? How come? And, and tell them also, wait a minute, Muhammad didn't know how to read and write, peace be upon him. He was an illiterate person. He didn't know any language besides Arabic. So he could have not had access to some information that was kept hidden from Jews and Christians. You know, he could have not. He couldn't read and write. He didn't know how to, not even his name. And he didn't know Aramaic. He didn't know Hebrew. He didn't know any other language besides Arabic. How did Muhammad know? Ask them, make them think. It could have been only by Allah. Allah is the only one, the only source of knowledge. To tell Muhammad this, 
which you yourselves didn't know for many, many centuries, you Jews and Christians. Hmm? So with this verse, you prove to them as to why. You, you may have your own reasons. You may have your own evidence shown to you before. Each and every one of you made the decision to come in, to Islam for one reason or more reasons and after research. But this is something also that I feel you need to learn and share with Muslims and non-Muslims, especially that by the year 1216, the so-called State of Israel is going to finish the project of digitizing all of the manuscripts and putting them online. Only three years left. And they're going to put them online now. But we need to go back to the verse and finish. And so bear with me. Now, the verse doesn't end there. Allah told us what they did to the Torah. And then in the year 1947, what Allah told us, 1947, what Allah told us, you know, the whole world came to see for a fact. Then the verse also goes on. You, Jews, you Christians, you people of the book, you were taught what you did not know, what you had no knowledge of by those who copied the Bible. In meaning, you were taught something new. You were taught something different from what God had said. And that's something that you were taught even your fathers didn't know. What is Allah talking about here? Allah is talking about many additions to the Torah, many things that Jews and the Christians added to the scriptures that were not in the original. You remember? They copied from the original, they made it into scrolls, and they hid it, but they added so much to it. And also they found that true. They found that true. This is a picture of one of the scrolls. It's called the Isaiah scroll. You know, they only found fragments of every, of almost every biblical book, save a few. You know, you know, fragments eaten, not complete. And so, what did they find now? Listen, back, going back to Wikipedia, they said. The Dead Sea Scrolls are traditionally divided into three groups. Biblical manuscripts that are copies of texts from the Hebrew Bible, other manuscripts, and secretarian manuscripts, previously unknown documents. So, the Christians and the Jews want us to believe that now the Dead Sea Scrolls are the oldest copies of the Bible. But it has many more books which they don't have in their Bible. This is a Christian Bible. So if you ask them today, how old is your oldest? Oh, it's one, oh, it's, uh, it goes back to even 400 years before Jesus. Are you talking about Dead Sea Scrolls? Yes, yes, sir. They were revealed and inspired by God. But the same people who wrote by God's inspiration, those Dead Sea Scrolls, they also added books that you can't find them in the Bible. Why didn't you add them? Why did you leave them out? If they were all inspired by God, they don't have a question to that. And then, they, they, according to the Oxford Companion to Archaeology, Oxford University, I'll finish with this and listen very carefully to what they're saying. And what they're saying here confirms what Allah says in the, in the Quran. The biblical manuscripts from Qumran Valley the Dead Sea Scrolls, which include at least fragments from every book of the Old Testament, except perhaps for the book of Esther. They couldn't find a scroll for that book. Provide a far older cross-section of scriptural tradition than that available to scholars before. While some of the Qumran biblical manuscripts are nearly identical, to the Masoretic or traditional Hebrew text of the Old Testament, the Masoretic is what they thought is the oldest. It goes back to the 10th century. 
400 years after Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, that is the oldest, according to the Jews. So now they're saying, while some of the Qumran, some of the Qumran biblical manuscripts are nearly identical to the Masoretic or traditional Hebrew text of the Old Testament, some manuscripts of the books of Exodus, one of the books of the Torah, and Samuel find in cave number four exhibit, listen very carefully, exhibit dramatic differences in both language and content. There are differences between the Masoretic text, which they thought is the older, and between the Dead Sea Scrolls. Differences. Who is responsible for those differences? Allah told us, you people of the book were, were taught that which you had no knowledge of. You, neither you and your father, nor your fathers. So all of this is confirming what the Quran is saying. The evidence you want to know is really Muhammad the Prophet? Did God send him? There's just one proof, one proof, and the entire Quran from verse 1 to the last verse is a proof and evidence from God. Now this is for Jews and Christians and pagans. Remember, this verse was a response to the pagans. Today, in our modern day world, you see, you see Hindus claiming they also have holy books. You see Buddhists that they say we also have holy books, like Jews and Christians. Pagans and Jews and Christians are lying, becoming allies and friends against Muslims. In battlefields, in the media, everywhere, you know, they, they can accept each other as claim. They can, Buddhists and uh, Hindus won't have a problem with the Book of Moses, but the moment you tell them about the Quran, they, they take objection. They are becoming friends and allies and they're joining forces. And I'm not talking about every Hindu, every Buddhist, every Jew and Christian. I'm talking on the level of the political leaders, the religious leaders. As you can see, the lies that are being spread. In Burma, what the Buddhists are doing to Muslims. In Kashmir, what the Hindus are doing, or Hindu leadership is doing to the Muslims. In Palestine, what Zionist Jews and Christians are doing to Muslims. And the list goes on. In Africa today, in Mali, the list goes on. In Afghanistan, it goes on and on and on. Teaming up together. So one verse from the Quran knocks their forces, all of them. The pagans at the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, they couldn't answer him. And the Jews and the Christians today cannot answer this verse. They cannot prove this verse wrong. And the question is hanging still. How did Muhammad Sallallahu know? Which you did not know for 2,000 years or more. Judaism is all. So I leave you with that question because me, inshallah, you know, thanks to Brother Hefs, they will be watching this on YouTube. This is also for them. I leave them hanging with the question. How did Muhammad knew about the Dead Sea Scrolls, about the Qumran Scrolls? And you didn't know. You filled with the Holy Spirit. You saved by the blood of Jesus on the cross. That's what they say. You Muslims are going to hell. But Jesus died for our sins. We are on the right path. You're going to hell. They are saying that. How come you are the saved people? You didn't know. And Muhammad Wasallam, that you ridicule, you mock, you draw funny, silly cartoons that are not even uh, you know, depicting him. You burn the Quran. In America, Terry Jones, <laughs> Pastor Terry Jones, they burned the Quran in India, you know, and you, they asked Terry Jones, have you read the Quran, Pastor? No, I don't need to read the Quran. I didn't read the Quran. Wow, man. Goats eat books, monkeys stir them, and Terry Jones and his followers burned it. But human beings open and read the book. So invite your non-Muslim friend to own his copy or her copy and read the Holy Quran with an open mind. You want to know why I embrace Islam? Why I'm a Muslim? Why I love Muhammad, peace be upon him? Why I react this way? Why I love this book? 
Why is this book is medical? Open and read for yourself. May Allah make us learn more from this book and from the life and example of Prophet Muhammad so that we share more with the people. Thank you for paying uh, attention and listening and bearing with me. Jazakumullah khairan wa ahsan Allah alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Would you allow questions or? Is it, does anyone have any related to the topic? Don't ask me about fatwas. Any question related to the topic? No? Alhamdulillah. So everything was clear? Alhamdulillah.